have been alerted to your presence, sir. Flashy things. Hiya, guys. Terry from Smooth Watch up here. Welcome to build video number one in my um, Revel Star Wars X-Wing fighter in 1-1-1-2 scale build. Um, flashy lights. Yeah, I'm going to be building this adding some LEDs, hence the room's a bit dark just to show this off. I haven't decided on uh, this colour yet, but uh, I'm, this is a level 3 kit, so it's aimed at beginners, but I'm going to be putting an LED lighting kit in it. So, whether or not you want to do LEDs in it, doesn't really matter, the build's going to be the same apart from my modifications. So when we go on to the next bit, I'm going to approach this from a beginner's aspect uh, and go through some of the basic tools you'll need because this is a level 3 kit. It's, it's aimed at sort of first timers, um, people that are not used to building big kits. There's only two, well there's three sprues, two main sprues. Um, I've done a review on the kit, you can watch that on my YouTube channel. Um, so I've, I've done a walk around the instructions and everything and what parts are in it so I don't need to go over that again but it's a very very simple kit but I'm going to be putting lights in it so even if you don't want to put lights in it it'll still run through the rest of the build with you so off and watch the video Let's see what we've got Bye. Hey guys welcome back Terry from Smooth Watch up here Okay, this Rebel kit, it's a level 3 kit, so it's aimed at beginners, um, there's not a lot of parts to it that I've already explained, um, I have cut some parts off because I've, I'm a bit of a step ahead, but um, you're going to be working with these, these two sprues for just now. <clears throat> I'm going to do a quick run through of... Obviously, as, as this kit is aimed at a beginner, um, a few basic tools you'll need. So, in order to cut these parts off the sprue, you're ideally going to need to set off sprue cutters. Now, these are Tamiya ones, but there's lots of different sprue cutters out there. These have got a particularly fine point in them for getting in roundabout. What a sprue cutter does is, this is your sprue. And all your parts are mounted uh, with little tabs. And I'm not going to cut these parts off, but this is one of the tabs. And if you can imagine there's a part on here. The sprue cutter goes in and lets you cut close to the part. And take it off. So that way, um, especially if it's kids that's doing it, they don't need to use a sharp knife. Okay. So if kids are going to be doing it, you're better with sprue cutters. Um, you can do it with a knife, but you tend to find when you're pressing down on the part close to it that it doesn't give you the best effect. A, a, a cutting device is the best. So some, something to cut the, the parts from a sprue with. Um, if children are making this kit, do supervise them with, with knives. Um, these are really, really sharp scalpel blades. I use an Exacto number 11 in mine. Um, these can be used for opening up holes, trimming off excess, stuff like that. But um, a kid won't need to use this if you get them sprue cutters because you can sand the extra little nub that's left on the part away. So something like that. Now, <clears throat> if you're... Uh, not going to be using a knife for trimming back then you're going to need some sort of sanders now ultimate modeling products make a range of sanders uh what have i got here um and different grits um now the lower the number the rougher the grit is uh, i can't even mind what some of these are but uh, i mean this is a really really coarse one um This one's finer, 
and even finer on the back. I tend not to use those two. I use the, this thinny stick, which is 220 on both sides. So that's 220 grips per square centimetre or inch. Um, so you're going to need something to sand back the bits that are left on your part. I also like these as well. They're for Ultimate Modeling Products as well. It's a Buffy stick. Uh, one side has a really fine grit of 3000 and the buffer side is like 15,000. So you go in with your 220, get as close as you can to the part, and you go in with the 3000, take it all nice and smooth, and then you buff it up. So that's how you get rid of the nubs. So some something to sand. If you if you haven't got these, you can use different grits of sandpaper, but you work from the coarse up to the finer ones. So from the lower number, like say 100, 100 grit, up to 200, which is smoother, up to 400, which is smoother still, up to 600, and you can go like that. But I tend to just use these two. Um, sometimes um, you might find actually that small files are handy. I've got a selection of files here, they're really, really cheap, and they're in different shapes. And you can also use these for taking the worst of nubs back and opening things up so there's a flat file uh, there's a half round one so it's flat at the bottom and, and curved at the top there's a triangular one for getting into tight spaces a round one that's tapered for getting into holes and a square one they're really handy they're not a must really really handy if you've got uh, a set of files right um you might get some really, really small parts. I've got quite big sausage fingers, so you're going to need something to, to sometimes hold them. Now, worth getting in your arsenal. I mean, these are really cheap. I got them off eBay. It's called reverse tweezers. These are normal tweezers where you squeeze them to grip the part. And when you let go, it lets the part go. Reverse tweezers are already clamped. You squeeze them to let the part go. So if you need to hold something small while you're painting it or, you know, whatever you're doing to it, these are really, really handy. So these are called reverse tweezers. So they're normally clamped and you squeeze to open them. Uh, I've got a couple other pairs of uh, tweezers here. These are just got a fine point on them. And these ones have got an angled point for getting in. So just, just a couple of pairs of tweezers. Um... So that's you cut the part, sanded it, or filed it. You can pick up small parts. You're going to need to glue the thing together. So I have three different types of glue here. Actually, four. Um, I'll just pull this one out as well. Um... The first glue here is a hot glue. I'll be using that in some instances. It's Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. It's a capillary action glue. I'll explain that when I start using it. But uh, that's one kind of glue. The Tamiya White Top is a thick, gloopy glue. That is your traditional polystyrene cement. Um, it takes a bit longer to cure, but it has its applications as well. This is one of my preferred ones. Again, this is a gloopy glue. This is Humbro, Humbro Position Poly Cement. But what it has is it has a very, very fine applicator. You've got a watch that you don't need to keep putting your top on so it doesn't uh, block up. But that allows you to put very, very small drops of glue um, where you want to put it. I do like that. I use that quite a lot. Um, I usually use the Precision uh poly and the extra thin and in some instances where it's big parts and I've got big parts to grab I'll use the, the white top Tamiya. Um, right there are clear parts in this kit. Um, when you stick clear parts onto the other uh, polystyrene or styrene parts you don't want to use something like the extra thin 
If you ever get a clear part and put that on, it mists it up and makes it go all white and cloudy. Um, I've actually forgot one type of glue. I'll put that on the end here. Um, same with the white top and the precision poly. It tends to interact with the clear plastic, so it's not a good thing to do. Um, another glue. Uh, CA glue or super glue comes in gel or thin or whatever you want um, it's handy for if you're doing a kit with photo etch or you know something like that but it's don't use it on canopies it will frost them up as well so don't use super glue um, also super glue is <coughs> this extra thin stuff right the hot glue when you put the two bits of plastic together, it actually melts it and they knit together. Okay, and it actually melts the two parts together. Um, the goopy glues do the same, but sl more slowly. It's not as quick acting. A uh, super glue or CA glue, when you put the two parts together, it's just contact. It doesn't melt the parts together. So if you apply force either way, you can actually shear it off and the part can just come away again. So it's it's not good for applications where it's you're needing tensile strength. Okay, so that's a CA glue. Right, going back to the clear parts. What you want to use, this is the stuff I like, is micro crystal clear. Some people call it canopy glue uh, in America. Um... I'm just going to go into the next one. It's, just, it's very similar, this, to PVA, your standard PVA craft glue. It dries clear. Uh, in America, for my American friends, this PVA glue is known as Elmer's glue. Um, I'm not advertising them, but any craft PVA glue, um, you can do it with that as well. So that's glues. I think I've pretty much got them covered. There is another type of glue, but we'll not be using it on this model. Uh, it's for a different type of plastic, and I'm waiting on it coming. So that's glues. Um, so you've you, you you've um, cut your parts off, okay, and you've sanded them and filed them, and they're all nice and smooth and everything. And you've got your glue, and you can glue them together. Yeah, but sometimes, now this is exaggerated obviously, sometimes you'll get a gap where two parts go together, even though you've glued it and squidged it and all the rest of it, you still get a little gap. You may need some filler. Now the stuff I like to use is Perfect Plastic Putty. Uh, it's uh, water soluble, so you can put it on and smooth it off with water. Um, it does shrink a little bit, but it tends not to crack, so that's what I like to use. There's lots of different kinds of filler. I mean, here's quite a hot one. That's uh, Mr. Primer Surfacer 1000 by Mr. Hobby. Um, <coughs> each one has its applications, but for general filling, I use Perfect Plastic Putty. So that's a filler if you've got any gaps. Um, right, what else? Okay, you may find... Um, when you're doing test fits and stuff, or you want to mask things off, you can use masking tape. Uh, Tammy, I do a range of sizes and rolls, uh, different thicknesses, 12mm, I think that's 8mm, uh, that's about 5mm, 3mm and 2mm. Um, they're handy for, you know, if you want to paint one bit one colour, and another bit another colour, you can mask off the area so that you can paint the other bit. If you're doing it by brush, it doesn't really matter so much if you've got a steady hand, but I use an airbrush. I'll go into paints later when we're actually painting the model, but this is just basic stuff. So, uh, a supply of masking tape. Um, the, the Tamiya stuff is low tack. If you get masking tape, you want to get low tack. Don't get the stuff from your DIY store that you use for masking your skirt and boards or whatever. It's too sticky. And what happens is if you mask on top of paint and you peel it back off, it'll rip your paint back off. So that's masking tape. Um, 
other thing you can use on canopies if you don't want to um, if you don't want to uh, mask them up or if you've got little small areas that you can't get into mask there's a liquid masking medium and you basically paint it on with a little brush and it dries it's like it's almost like that silicon stuff that you get and then you do all your painting and then you peel this stuff off and what's underneath won't have the paint on it so that's a different type of mask you can use masking tape or you can use mask they both have their advantages in different situations um, that's it I think right that's that's the basic tools um, because I'm going to be modifying stuff um, I'm going to need to drill little holes here and there so you can get little twist drills now these are your standard hobby twist drills going really small sizes for about 0.3 to 1.6 millimeters okay and you get a thing called a pin vise which is basically a little collet you put your little drill bit in there and then you tighten it up and it'll actually put, I don't know if you can see that, uh, what have I got, it's a different colour at the background, <sighs> nothing really to hand, I'm just trying to see if you can see that, that's a tiny tiny little draw bit, um, and I keep my most common sizes, so I've got a couple of pin vices, so if you want to drill a hole through something, you know, you just twist it by hand, you do get fancy ones that you can pump up and down, but I find I get more control, um, with that because I'm going to be drilling holes um, I'm going to use that but I also have now these are actually CNC drill bits um, these are what they use in the factories for when they're making printed circuit boards and they're drilling all the holes the machines are doing it automatically so I've got some really small sizes in that um, little twist bits with the collars on um, so a friend sent me those and uh, I'm, I, I use them sometimes as well and I just twist them by hand so there's it's not a tool that you'll you'll need in every build but I will be using it in this build so I just thought I would uh, throw that in there so that's the tools so now what we're going to do is actually go into building the kit so I'll get prepped for that in a bit. Hi hey guys, welcome back. Terry here, Smooth Workshop. <clears throat> right, a couple other quick two one tool and one handy item um, to also consider getting. Uh, it's called an extra hand, that's this little device here. It's got a weighted base um, with adjustable crocodile clips on it. Now I tend to use it for holding my instructions as well as when I'm soldering or um, if I'm painting really, really small parts. Um, at the moment I've got the instructions in there but I'll take that out just now now remember I was talking about the reverse action tweezers there's a little pilot figure there ok and he's got a little bit at the back so if you you can use the reverse action tweezers to hold them while you paint them or I'll just take that out of there you can use one of these extra hands and clip them in to a crocodile clip and that gives you slightly more purchase when you go in um, this is a massive paintbrush but if you're going in with a paintbrush you can paint away and he's not moving about so you can paint all his detailing and everything like that so these are really handy these helping hands um, so yeah I just thought I would show you that I do tend to waffle a bit in my videos, I'm very sorry about that, um, it's just kind of, I get distracted. Oh look, a squirrel. <laughs> right, another handy thing, um, white tack, not blue tack. Blue tack has oils in it, um, you can use white tack for masking things, grip and hold the small things, and the reason that I've got it for this build is, I'm going to be um, trying to run wires and planning putting LEDs and stuff in and I don't want to be gluing parts together 
so sometimes a wee bit of white tack holds something in place whilst I test things. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically <clears throat> comes in a wee pack like this, and I'll just this is a new one. Comes in little strips like chewing gum, and you just break a piece off and you work it between your fingers till it gets warm and sticky, and you can break bits off. And then use it to stick things or mask things or whatever. Um, or, you know, hold something on a stick while you, you spray it with an airbrush and paint it. And then when you're finished, you just take it off and rub it again and all the paint flakes off and you can reuse it. Uh, I've got some I've been using for a while. And it's not white anymore. But it's not blue tack. It's white tack with paint through it. So it's got a bit of tinge and hairs and all sorts of stuff through it. Yeah, because I've, I've used that on cocktail sticks for painting. So yeah, another another wee handy thing to get. Right, on to the build. I'll just put this away. Now, uh, although the X-Wing fighter is a sci-fi um, spaceship, it's pretty much like an aircraft. So if you've ever built an aeroplane, um, and it details it in the instructions here, just put the instructions up. The first step in an aircraft before you, you, you put the two halves of the, the fuselage together is always the pilot figure and the cockpit detail. So <clears throat> normally you would paint and detail you would paint and detail up all your pilot and you would paint all your cockpit and where the parts are visible, where the cockpit is on the inside of the fuselage, you would match it up to the inside of the cockpit colour. Um, and you would do all the cockpit first um, before you move on to the next part. Now, I'm going to be doing this slightly out of sequence because I'm going to be doing test fitting and stuff. So, um, I have cut the, the parts that are required. Um, the actual cockpit itself and the pilot figure out um, now this kit doesn't have a lot of parts so it's quite easy to keep track of them but on your sprue each part is numbered now if you're doing a bigger kit and you want to take the parts off and clean them up but some parts are similar like these engine covers Okay, these go on to the, the, the wings. They all look very, very similar, but they've all got different part numbers. A wee tip that I do is I get a wee Sharpie pen, and the part number that's on the sprue, just write it inside so I know that this is 5R, and I know that this is, because they just look the same, this is 5L, and the other two are 10R and 10L, right and left. Um... So if you take a part off and you, it's similar to another part and you're not sure what the part is, just write on it what the part is and then you can clean it up and everything like that and then you know what part goes into what part. Um, so yeah, as far as the pilot painting and the cockpit painting goes at the moment, I'm not painting them. I could paint the pilot if I wanted to. But that takes time away from me working out what I'm going to be doing with the LEDs. Now, any reference I make to LEDs in this, you can ignore if you're just building the normal kit. I will get round to doing the pilot and, and putting them in the cockpit and everything, but I'll be doing it in a bit of a jumbled up order. Um, sometimes when you're, if you read through your instructions first, you can build up what's called sub-assemblies. So, for example, if he was painted and the cockpit was painted and I glued them in together, that would be a sub-assembly, two parts together. Similarly with the, the engines, if you're doing the normal build, there's, there's uh, locating holes there and locating pegs and you would put the glue on them and you would match them up and you would glue them together. I can't do that because I want to put an LED in there and wiring. So I'll be modifying this slightly, but when you're doing the kit, you'll just glue them together. So if you're not doing the LED part, some of it will not be applicable to you. And 
possibly this first part, first couple of parts of the video won't apply to you because whilst it's all apart like this, I need to modify it to get the wires in. Now it's not a difficult kit, so the biggest part of this is going to be modifying running all the wires. Um, because I'm putting lights in, light tends to reflect through plastic, so I need to um, put light blocking in there, whether it be uh, dark paint or silver foil, so that when the whole model is together and it's all painted and the LEDs come on, you don't see the whole inside of the model lighting up, you only see the bits you want to see light up, light up, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing it slightly out of sequence. <coughs> so it tells you the first bit of paint your pile. If you're not doing the LEDs, paint your pile up. Obviously, dress all the, the wee nubs off them, sand them down, get them all looking all nice, get them primed up, and then paint them all your colours. Probably with a figure this size, I would just brush paint them by hand. Um, the cockpit itself, it's tiny as well. Um, you're not going to really see a lot of it. You could possibly do that by hand as well, although I would do the main body colour with my airbrush and then pick out the seat in a different colour. Um, so that's step one. The next step, it's, it's telling you to start applying... Right, this kit, if you, want, if you don't want to paint it, it's white plastic. Um, it gives you decals to do all the coloured parts. It even gives you decals... Um, for a canopy if you don't want to mask it so you could in theory um, and I've noticed the connections on this are quite tight, you could possibly clip them together, they do make a snap fit version of this and it's I'm wondering if it's the same tooling because I'm going to have to make some modifications to it, um, so it's basically telling you in the next step um, to put your decals on the top and bottom and paint the cockpit area and paint a little bit of detail on there. Um, it then tells you to put the cockpit and the clear parts in. I'm not going to be doing that at the moment but that's what you would do next and it shows you the decals actually for the clear parts there. I'm going to skip that just now and in the next part it tells you to take the wings, which are these parts, and it tells you to glue the engine covers on, which I've already explained I can't because I'm putting a light in there. So you would glue your engine covers on, but remember before you put the two halves together, you put the intake piece in, because it slots in a little slot, and I'll just get these the right way around. There is a little slot in there, and on the flip side of that, in there, and on the sprues, there are four little intake things. Now, you would take them off, clean them up, and there's a little tabs on there, and you would insert it in one side and put a wee I would actually use the extra thin at this point to put it in. Tells you to paint it before you put it in. Nah. Uh, that will become obvious when I actually go to do the painting. But one in there, one in there. And then put your engine cover on, engine cover on. And the same for the other wing. Um, as I say, I won't be doing that because I've got to put LEDs in it. Um, and that's basically what the next two sections are. So, I'm kind of skipping, I, I'm going to be putting the parts together and test fitting them, but I'm not going to be gluing them, okay? And then the next part, it shows you how to put the two X wings together. Now, there's a certain way that they go, and the front part has the hole and sorry is that the front that's aye the rear part right the rearward facing part has that in it and there's a peg on this one and they basically go in 
like that. Now that is the wrong way of doing it. It's actually this way. And the way to tell is there's little... Now I'm not sure if these actually move, but there's... <clears throat> the way to tell if you've got it correct or not... Sorry, I don't have a zoom on this. There's a little tab there, a little stop, and there's a little stop there. The two stops should be on the same side. That's the wings in the closed position. Okay. So this is the front of the, the aircraft. And it's only on the one side. So you want the you want it so that the two tabs are on the same side. Okay, because I'm wondering whether it actually allows you to go X and whatever. But we'll figure that out, because if it does do that, I'll need to watch what I'm doing with the wiring. Because my plan is... A little bulb in there, and then I'm going to drill holes through and, and hide the wires inside the body. Um, I'm not worried about, about the wires being visible, because the way I'm thinking about it is an actual X-Wing fighter. For it to go... There's going to be hydraulics involved. Yeah? So hydraulics have pipes connected to a pump and that puts the pressure up like a digger and it goes into that position and into that position. So I'm thinking I can maybe disguise them as hydraulic pipes as they go. Obviously I'll hide everything else inside here and then figure out the best way to drill it <coughs> um, to get the, the wires to go into the main, where I can hide everything inside. Okay, so there is a space. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to make a little stand up for this. It doesn't come with one. Now I haven't got the right size tube here. Um, it doesn't come with a base, but I'm going to make one. You get this stuff called evergreen, um, which is different shapes of styrene, and this one is too big, but it's. 5 16th or that's an American 5 16th or Imperial uh, which is about the same as 7.9 millimeters which is too big see there's a hole up the middle I don't know can you hold on we hole up the middle um, it's too big <coughs> for this model and my plan is that obviously I'm going to be putting lights inside this and lights are going to be attached to wires and the wires are going to be attached to a battery and a switch and I can't hide my 9 volt battery inside this so what I'm going to do with smaller tube I think it's about 4 mil I'm going to get because this is just a bit big I, I, I could mount it on this but it would look a bit out of scale with a model sitting on it in a big big thick tube like that so I've ordered thinner stuff now the reason for me having the tube is, when I drill a hole in the bottom of there, this is where the X wings parts sit. Um, they sit kind of like that, and then the, the top of the body goes on. I'm not pushing these together yet, okay? So that's your, your X wing. There is some movement on them, but not a lot. Um, if I go in with a really, really heavy rod, it's going to look a bit stupid. So I'm going to get a finer, finer grade of rod to go in there. And basically what I'll do is I'll drill out that hole to the diameter of the rod and slide the rod in slightly and glue it. Now, the advantage of it having the holes down the middle is I'm going to be passing wires. Now, let me just see, have I got some wire here? I have got some wire here. Can I get it out? Oh Terry, you should be better prepared. It's just to try and demonstrate. Um, so if you can imagine that I have uh, got all my LEDs in position and all the wires hidden inside, I need to connect it to my power source. I think that'll be long enough. And this is where a wee bit planning goes in. Now, you won't have to worry about this if you're just doing a normal kit. Because you're not going to be putting the wires in. 
so as I say, the next video or maybe a couple of videos is um, is going to be involving my modifications. But if you can imagine, there's all, all the wiring's in there. I mean, I'm going to be running little wires from the LEDs down through and inside the actual body of it. And there's a hole out the bottom. And then it just goes through this tube. Okay. Obviously, I'll cut the tube shorter. Yeah. But, uh, right, so I've got wire coming in from my model. And it comes out the bottom. And then I mount the bottom bit onto a base. And then I can have the wire going away to my power source with a switch. So that's sitting up on the rod uh, on the little base that I'll make. And so when I turn the power on, you can't see any of the wires. Okay. But as I say, I don't have the right the diameter of rod at the moment. Um, I've got it ordered. It should be coming soon. But it won't stop me going on to the next part because the, the next part I'm going to do is LEDs. Um, if you're not doing the LEDs, it then goes on to putting the pylons on, which I've left on the sprues just now to save them getting damaged because they're quite thin. Okay, so that's your weapon pylons. And then it tells you to put the two halves of the body together and the, and the rear piece which is basically the aircraft done and then you start uh, painting up R2-D2 and he sits on the top, the top of the craft and it then details all the decaling and painting and stuff like that But uh, and that's basically the model built so the actual build of it is not hard uh, it's just that the actual sticking together you won't see me doing until a bit later on. Right, and the reasons for this. Because this is kind of a snap together fit. These holes here. Okay. And the pins on there. On the body. When you're gluing it together. Right, and then you squeeze it. I believe if I was to push that in, that would snap fit and I wouldn't get it back apart again. Okay, and I'm probably going to have to take this on and off and on and off and try that and, that and, and stuff like that. So I'm either going to open these holes out a bit so that it doesn't snap fit, it just locates, or I'm going to remove these tabs altogether and line it up by eye. Now, what I haven't done. Now, <clears throat> this is a, a tip on an aircraft. Obviously, imagine that gap's not there and I've, I've put it together. There are a couple of nub marks for where I've cut it off from the sprue there and there. Now, you could sand them and clean them up individually, you know, and go like that and sand it smooth so that you don't see where it was attached to the, to the sprue. Problem with that is you've got one opposite it on the bottom part and you might sand one bit a bit more than the other bit. Uh, so when you put them together, you, it'll be uneven. So when you're doing aircraft or anything like that, get the two halves together and then dress those nubs up. And in that way, everything's perfectly smooth rather than doing it individually. Okay, so <clears throat> that's kind of all I can do at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do I'll, I'll just show you what I'm putting into it now that little board that you've seen lighting up um, I don't know if it will show up under these lights so I'll just click the lights off just now it's basically two circuits in there running off the one battery there's four little um, three millimeter red flickering LEDs. These are the ones that are going to go inside the engine pods. Yeah. So these are going to be sitting inside them. Now can you see how the light's coming right through there? And I'm thinking about lighting the cockpit up blue, but I don't know how that'll go with his yellow. I don't know whether to light it from underneath like that. 
I might have to take a, a dimmer LED. I'll experiment with that. But there's also, um, let's put my lights back on. There's also a teeny, 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 tiny, um, where was it? I thought it was in his head up display. Or is that in the top body? Ah, right. in, the, in the top body of the craft, there's a tiny, tiny little head up display. And right in the middle is a circular dial. Now, if this is 170 second scale, it would be a bit bigger. I could probably light up. There's one, two, three. There's, there's two either side and a central one. The two either side are about half a mil thick. I don't have fibre optic cable thin enough to go in those. But the one in the middle is one millimetre. Um, and I have this stuff called fibre optic cable, which is this stuff. And the nifty thing about that is, if you stick the fibre optic on the end of the LED, I'll try to see if you can see that flash in there. The light's transmitted up the end of it. I'm trying to get it on the right bit. Right, what I'll do is I'll kill this light. Just try to explain it a little bit to you guys. Now the advantage of fibre optics is you can run them to places that you can't get an LED in. So, right. Let's see if you're seeing that now. Right, see that blue tinge? And that's that way. And then put it back on the LED. Blue tinge. Now I could put that up the centre of that little dot. But what I don't know is if that would provide enough light. Which is maybe why I'm experimenting at the moment. Where's my wee man? Right, so I'll kill that light again. I do need some light on for the camera. But what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm trying to see... If I put that on that LED, would it light my man up? It would slightly. Just ever so slightly. Um, the issue I've then got is he's painted yellow and blue on yellow. Would that look okay? I don't know. Um, and so this is all little experiments I'm going to do off camera. Uh, I need a glossy yellow. Have I got a glossy yellow there? I have. I tend to paint the tops of my Tamiya pots. So there's a yellow paint. See that was the colour he was painted. Now I can hold it up against the blue to see what sort of reflection. It actually kills the yellow. So I probably won't go for a blue LED. I might go for a yellow LED. Um, unfortunately the yellow LED is a slightly different voltage so I'd need to change the resistor out. Um, and I'm just going to try this. This is what I'm going to be doing at the next stage. I'm going to be experimenting with colours and stuff. Now, I've got that wee blue LED there on that yellow. And it, the blue and the yellow doesn't really go together. Now, whilst I could light that little dial up in the middle, uh, I think it's his target finder. I don't know what the actual colour of the target find, target finder is on the X-Wing. If I had a bit more space, um, because basically what I would be talking about is drilling out that little centre bit there and feeding the fibre optic up to it. If I was to get a green in there, it would look like a bit like a radar screen. Um, just to light that up, that would need to go along another LED that I would need to try and hide in the nose cone. And to give you an idea of the size of the LEDs that I'm working with, <clears throat> those red flashing ones, now this is an LED, okay, and it's got two legs on it for the, the power going in. Right, so that's an LED. Now, the diameter of it is three millimetres. And what I've been looking at, this is the rear part of the engine is that that sits in there. Now, I'll have to cut that bit out so that it shows, but that sits in there. Okay? So that's going to simulate like the red exhaust gases coming out. 
and then obviously I've got attached wires to that, so I've got to drill things. Um, so that's the scale I'm working on with the with, with the engines. Um, might make more sense to you. Here's the, the X wing. There's the front intakes. So these LEDs are going to be sitting. Four of them. They're going to be sitting somewhere around about there. So I'm going to have to modify it to fit, which means I might have to cut these posts off. I'm not worrying about that too much. So there's there's one in each of these, and then the covers go on once that's all wired up, so the light's inside it. So that's those ones. Once I decide on what colour is going, now this is this is where I, I, I test fit things. There's there's the pilot. Okay, and his cockpit, and if I stick that in there just now, that's where he's sitting. Now, I'm just going to kill the lights again. These are the experiments I'll be doing off camera. Right, and I'm just going to pull this on again. Actually, if I take the feed away from the red LED just now, because it's doing my head in. Right. I'm only interested in the blue one, okay, and I can sort of go like that. Now, that that kind of shows up how he would light up. I don't know if you can make that out, but it also shows how the light comes through the body of the the body of the craft as well. How you have to mask it off. So he looks kind of quite cool in the blue if he had a white suit on, but it's yellow. So I'm going to experiment with different coloured LEDs to see what he looks like. Um, I might end up actually painting them so I can stick them in and see what it looks like with the LED. That's going to be possibly too bright so I can add a resistor in there, but I'll go into the wiring later. Add a resistor in there, it's a higher value to dim that out a bit. But see how it's shining through all the plastic? Now, bearing in mind that when that's in, it's going to be sitting inside of here. Okay. It shines through all the plastic. So I've got to mask all that. I've got to try and stop that light coming out. But I'll show you how I do that later. So, that's as far as we're going with this video. It's probably running into um, an hour, my usual. So, I've covered the tools you need. Um, how you would normally construct it, why I'm doing it slightly out of sequence. Um, for those that are just building the standard model, you won't need to do a lot of the modifications that I'm going to be doing in the next video or two. Um, you, you can basically ignore them and skip them out, because I've already shown you how easily the, modi the, the model goes together. Um, once I'm past the LED parts, yeah, no, it's working again. Uh, once I'm past the LED parts and got them all in, and all the modifications done and the wiring done, then it's just going to be a normal kit build. It's going to be sticking parts together, and then how to, how to address any glue seepage, filling any parts, masking bits off, um, and then it'll be into painting. So the next video or so, if you're not doing the LEDs, prob probably won't appeal to you. Um, but if you are interested in lighting up kits, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this circuit. I'm going to do a, a, one or two little um, quick how-to videos on how to use a breadboard, how to wire a basic single LED, double LED, blinking LEDs. I've got stuff ordered up actually to do a Night Rider or a Cylon. Woo, 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 woo. So I'm going to be experimenting quite a lot with LEDs, but um, th th this is kind of a double build. It's like a really easy kit, so you can see how to build a kit and what tools you need to do for it. But because I'm putting LEDs in, I'm going to include it in. But I'm just waffling on now. Yeah. So next video is going to be showing you how I've fettled some of the parts to try and get them to fit in and trying out different colours of LEDs and all that to see what matches up. I may actually um, end up detail painting the guy um, and putting it in the cockpit just to s and, and maybe painting the cockpit just to see how the LED light comes up. 
Um, I don't think I'm going to use the um, fibre optic on this one. But uh, I've got other plans for that. I think I think just having the four engines glowing, you know, flickering away as if it's like... And, and they all flicker at different times. So it looks like the engines are all doing their own wee flamey thing. And some light in the wee cockpit there is going to be enough on a model of this scale. Um, for my first sort of lighting project. And you're kind of learning along with me. So, right, I'm not going to waffle on anymore. Next video will be modifying the kit for LEDs. So, if that's not what you're into, um, you, you probably might not want to watch it. Or you might want to watch it. So, this is Terry from Smooth Workshop. All you styrene fanatics out there, take care. Speak to you later. Bye.